when it comes to gut health, they've got it completely wrong. As a medical gastroenterologist, I cannot believe that people are now promoting the carnivore diet as a good diet for gut health. I mean, it makes no sense. We've known for decades that high meat consumption is an independent risk factor for multiple gastrointestinal problems, gastroesophageal reflux disease, fatty liver disease, inflammatory bowel disease, diverticular disease, and colon cancer, to name a few. We understand the mechanisms. We know that the animal protein, the heterocyclic amines, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and more, cause damage to the gut, increasing oxidative stress, inflammation, promoting gut barrier dysfunction. The perfect recipe for poor gut health. Not to mention the effects on the gut microbiome. If you're eating a meat-exclusive diet, you're pushing your microbiome into proteolytic fermentation. The postbiotic substances produced by this meat-fueled gut have negative impacts on gut health and overall health. But the carnivore promoters ignore all of this. They're not interested in science. I suspect the main reason they're promoting this is nothing to do with your gut health or your overall health. It's simply because they have this ethos, this belief system that you've got to eat lots of meat to be really healthy. They don't really care about your gut health. They just want to eat lots of meat. All right, beware of proteolytic fermentation, right? <laughs> hey, these guys are absolutely losing their minds over the fact that you are not following the science and yet you're getting healthy despite of it. You know, you're not listening to the learned, esteemed academic folks with all their credential and all their knowledge and all their quote unquote science and you're ignoring them and getting healthy despite of that. You know, how many of you guys have dramatically improved your gut health? whether it's IBS, whether it's IBD, whether it's gastroesophageal reflux disease, by going carnivore. The numbers are enormous at this point, right? And what they fail to do, so this is like, you know, when you're a kid and you have this, you know, this, this superhero that you look up to, and then later you realize that that superhero was fallible. You know, he was, a, he was an alcoholic, he beat his wife, he gambled, he cheated on his taxes, right? The superhero wasn't such a good guy, but you, 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 you come to a point where you're like upset about that, right? And this is what we're seeing here. These people that have so much invested in the absolute certainty of the science, which is always evolving, which is always subject to change. The certainty which they, they speak to me is quite alarming. You know, what you'll hear me say is, don't know, don't know for sure. It's worth investigating. You know, when we talk about the dangers of meat, it's never been tested in a way like a carnivore diet has tested it. There's so many confounders, so many variables, so many things that are on top of that. And so when you, you know, do kind of a pure examination, which, which a carnivore diet largely is, you know, without all the other dietary confounders and some of the other things, you start to see where the truth may lie, right? So anyway, uh, to these crazy uh, wacko, and this guy's a vegan, of course. Of course he's a vegan, right? And so you got, you've got that layered on top of that. You've got the, uh, I believe the science is infallible. It's, 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 it's just right all the time, even though it changes every you know, five years, right? But I believe in the science and I'm also a wacko vegan, right? And so I'm a vegan that's a zealot uh, with, uh, with my beliefs around animal welfare and animal ethics and animal rights and so on and so forth. So anyway, I think it's funny seeing these guys lose their minds. What do you guys think? We'll talk to you guys soon.